Hello, it's Uncle Bruce again, and this time we are in Section A. This is the information you must put into the model so that it percolates throughout. It's very easy. It's going to be a couple minutes here. So look, what we've got here is we've got the yellow sections, and that's where you enter the words, such as your company name, your website. Yeah, you got to have a website. You know that. Um, the founder name. Yeah, the founder telephone number. Yep, you need that too emails for that founder then the same thing for founder two we'll have two or you can leave one off again the phone number email over here we got the office address well it could be your automobile or it could be starbucks or it could be the corner of maine and elm for all i care sweet the city i live in houston this is where we do our business texas the great state of texas and the zip code, of course, we have a little section here for our good Canadian friends, the Canadian Postal Code. Now, over here, we have a choice. It's a gray drop-down. Watch. See, you can do nothing. You can do corporation. Or you can do a limited liability company. A word on limited liability companies. Most people say, oh, let's do a limited liability company because there's no taxes, or at least there's only taxes once on the distributions. Here's the real skinny. If you don't intend on finding professional investors anytime in the future, then leave it as an LLC. It's a small, closed, family type of deal, and you know, you're not going to be facing an IPO and a public uh, audit scrutiny in the SEC rules and regulations. However, if you think you're ever going to be public and you got that big billion dollar idea, make it a C Corp because the professional investors like that better. It's much easier to sell a C Corp on an IPO than it is to transform an LLC into a C Corp. So do it that way if you really think you got the big, 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 big deal. Otherwise, LLC. Now, there's one other cool little part here. You have to have a date. So I've produced a date line. And a date line normally is just months, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so forth. But I don't like that because it really doesn't tell you anything. I want to know what month is your starting month. So a lot of times people have problems because they start typing in the date or they sweep right with Excel, and they got to do that throughout the whole model. Well, watch this. We've automated the process. All you got to do is come over here to this little spin button and see if I make it bigger. It moves this date further into the future. If I subtract out, and I'll show you, this is fairly new, January 19th, November 2019. And there we are. Notice that it changes it and do this throughout the whole model, and you're done. Isn't that great? Okay, so we're done. Make sure you fill this out because there are areas that are blocked, locked, and you cannot put the numbers in or the words in. You have to do it here. Good luck.